Well, there's been so much focus on inflation that some of us may just miss the signs of deflation. That's when prices drop dramatically. And as good as that might sound, it's not necessarily what we want. Let's bring in Professor Dietrich von Biedenfeld from the University of Houston downtown. We always enjoy talking with you. So explain first, uh, Dietrich, what deflation is and how it actually hurts the economy. Absolutely. And so I think a visualization might help in the sense when we think about the opposite inflation, what we usually think about is that hyperinflation of Weimar Germany where people are taking wheelbarrows full of cash to buy a loaf of bread. And so the opposite is almost that Western visualization where uh, the protagonist Vicero takes uh, a coin and can buy a house, a horse, or, or endless whiskey, right? It just becomes money. And so that decreased price of consumer goods and services can cause a number of measurable impacts and tangible impacts, particularly in government services, business cash flow, and homeowners. So you see your home, for example, as an investable asset, not a depreciating asset like a vehicle. If you buy a home at a 25, 30 year mortgage, and then the value of that home to, to you know, for sale purposes diminishes, you've actually lost all your investment. Similarly, businesses seeking to uh, seek out financing or use commercial property as security will find that restricted. And then, of course, with government services, particularly in Texas, where we use property taxes to fund our road maintenance and our first responders, then you see instances uh, where budget contraction due to reduced appraisal value could uh, cause uh, similar instances where we've seen uh, sort of fire pitted against police in, in Houston and other uh, roadway challenges. Okay, so we've established we don't want deflation pretty much ever. Are, are there subtle signs now? I, I mean, when I take, like, look at lumber, for example, the prices have, have been down, what, about 20% since peaking? Absolutely. Um, however, they're still high. And so some of the contraction signs that we see in the economy, such as uh, sort of the quit rate, how many people, these, these uh, very historic measures of people leaving jobs in great numbers, they're counterbalanced by improvements in technology. And so as that automation increases, uh, but then the demand for employees offsets that. If you've ever waited in a res restaurant in the past month, uh, you, you found uh, it's a substantial need for, for service workers. And so that sort of counterbalances it. How long do you think we're talking about that, we, that deflation could last? Is this a short-term issue or could this potentially be long-term and even spiral you know, into the R word recession? Hopefully this is short term and there are a number of positive indicia such as the increased travel. So one of the challenges, we look at the uh, island of Maui trying to deter travelers from coming. That's actually a positive sign for the economy because that means that airlines will be able to actually raise prices. And of course we have entities such as OPEC or the Federal Reserve that can generally counterbalance some of those inflationary or deflationary tendencies in the economy. Dietrich von Wiedenfeld with U of H downtown. Thanks so much for your time this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you.